Okay, so we'll talk about performing data analysis now, and right? data visualization. So, what is the first step that you perform when you get the data? The first step that you perform is to clean the data, right? So, I'm going to use data from my GitHub location. One second. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. So, if you go to data set here, you have uh, multiple data. Okay. I think this is what we even did last time, right? I'm going to a new data set, which is hotel data set. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hotel bookings. Okay, so let's see the raw file. Okay, sometimes this raw version, yes, it's opening now. Okay, so this is the raw version. Okay, and you can directly read this data from here. In case you're not able to open raw version, you can download the data on your local machine and you can try. Otherwise, you can connect from directly from here. Even Collab will support this. Okay, so it has data set. These are the columns ID. Hotel name is cancelled. That means is the booking cancelled? Okay, so is here you see is the ID. Resort hotel is the hotel name, right? Then you have zero. Okay, that means is cancelled is zero. That means false. Lead time. Okay, how many days before the person has booked the data? Uh, booked the hotel. So three forty days before. Which year? What is the month? Okay, which week of the year it is? Week of the year. Then this is your uh, arrival date of the month. Okay. That means it is 1st July 2015. Okay. Uh, the month stays in weekend night, stays in week. How many weekends? In hotels, they talk about weekdays and weekends, right? They don't say five nights. Um, because the, you know, weekends and nights are different and weekday nights are different, right? The rates and everything. Okay. So they are breaking it into weekends and weeknights. Okay, so let's read this data. Okay, so how to read this data? You have to copy this CSV link. Go to here. Now I'm back on my PyCharm. Okay, so I'm going to say import pandas as PD and I'm going to say hotel df equal to pd.readcsv and you can directly give the location, right? And if you want to see, you can print the hotel DF. Okay, P2, P2, yes, run it. Okay, it'll come up. Okay, so see, it has read the data. Okay, so you have ID, hotel. Okay, where you say print, by default, it will show you first five rows and last five rows. Okay, great. The, it has read all the data from there. Now we will start. <clears throat> we will start. Plop. Um, huh? Oh yeah. So first we need to see. Okay, which data? Okay. Uh, so okay. So let me first to get into this. Now the first step, as you said, is data cleaning. Okay, and this is what our focus is for today. So when you perform data cleaning, there are multiple steps that you need to perform. Okay, first thing okay, that generally we do is, is for missing values. Okay, if there is column with missing value, then what do you do, right? Okay, um, mm? so yes, so, so there are two main strategy. Okay, one strategy is you delete that entire row. If one data is missing in a particular column, you remove that entire row. So if you delete all the, uh, rows. So now you are left with rows without any missing value, isn't it? This is good when very few percentage of data is has missing value. Okay. So let's say oh, you have uh, 1000 rows and there are 10 rows which constitute missing values. So drop 10 rows. So if you drop 10 rows from 1000 rows, probably 
it may not make much of difference to your analysis. So you can easily drop. Okay, they should have more rows missing. Okay, not that uh, you know if they have just one column missing. Let's say out of five or let's say you have ten columns and six seven columns are missing values. So if you have ten columns out of which seven eight columns are missing, that means they are not contributing anyway to your analysis. So if you remove them, it doesn't make sense, right? Even if there are hundreds of them, you can remove them because it doesn't make sense. Okay, so that is one. You drop the or you remove the rows only. Okay. Second thing is columns, as you said, right? So let's say if 90% of data in a column is missing. If 90% data of the column is missing, it's easy to remove the column than to remove the rows, right? So remove that column. If you remove that column, okay, 90% uh, of the uh, data in that column is anyway missing. So that column is not performing or not helping us to perform any analysis. Right, so we're looking at the row and column and seeing are they contributing, right? And it, again, as I said, right, it's up to you, okay? How you take it, how you decide. Now, whether it is ninety percent or eighty percent, it's up to you. Uh -huh. It also depends upon data. Data where it's very hard to get data, you may not want to delete it. But if data is there and you have, you know, and if you think that dropping that data is not going to have any bad impact yeah then you can drop it directly isn't it it's up to you so when when you have missing values first strategy is remove that data okay remove it remove it based on uh, column or rows okay so we say remove second strategy is replace it now if you see in a row okay you have row of 10 values 10 columns and only one value is missing because of one missing value it doesn't look good to remove the entire row right and the column also let's say the column has only five percent missing value so you know it's not doesn't make sense to in that case what we do is <clears throat> first you look at removing the missing and uh, rows and columns that's the first strategy once that is done, okay, then then also you'll be left with some data. Then what do we do? Okay, so uh, it depends upon what analysis you are doing. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. Hold on. Okay, so first let's look at the strategy. Okay, <clears throat> so first strategy is remove the values. After removing, you still might have some missing values. Then we need to replace missing value with some value, right? Okay. So the question is, which value should we replace with? So the answer is, again, it depends upon what analysis you are performing. When you are doing machine learning analysis, okay, and we'll see when we do there, okay, there we prefer to replace with median values. Why? Because median value generally is not going to have much impact on the analysis. See, in in uh, in when we when we do machine learning, machine learning is about prediction, correct? And what did we discuss when we talk about prediction? Okay, let's say you don't know machine learning. Okay, let's say you never uh, you, you don't know machine learning. Now, if you want to predict, okay, what will happen to the marks scored by students? So, what we do? We take the average marks, right? Generally, our intention is to take the average marks, okay? And then we say, okay, average was 70, so you expect 70. What we are doing by doing machine learning is, instead of doing entire average, we are breaking it down to small, small components, and then we're taking average, okay? So earlier, irrespective of student capabilities, number of hours they study, we said, okay, do average of all the students, and it's a 70. But now what we're doing, I think, okay, let's classify, let's group the students who studies for one to two hours, who studies two to three hours. And between one to two hours, then we are doing average only. Okay. So in machine learning analysis, average, okay, uh, is a median, is a good way to replace missing values. Okay. But when you talk about data analysis, when you talk about data analysis, then replacing with average may not be a good idea. 
in data analysis, what we're doing, we are projecting the data, right? So if you say average, the average count will increase. Okay. Now that's not a good. So what we do is generally here, we'll represent with uh, represent it with a number which will show up on the graph as a missing values. So sometimes we replace missing values with minus 99. So when you see a graph of minus 99, you know that, okay, this is because of the missing, these are the missing values. So in that particular, let's say, let's say uh, you have a column um, talking about number of children, let's say. Number of children is minus 99. Okay. So what we so for, for children, those many records are not playing important role. But for others, other number will play. We are not, see, we, we cannot remove each element. We have to either remove row or, or column. Okay, right. And we are not trying to remove because there are other numbers which are important for analysis in that row or in the column. So in missing value, we are marking it as missing so that at least other numbers in that row and column will have role to play. Will not be disturbed. Yes. Okay. Will not be disturbed. We'll have role to play. So what we do is, okay, in, in um, analysis, in EDA kind of work, we replace it with some different number, not with median. Median we'll do same thing we'll do with our day when we start data analysis also. Okay, there we'll replace with median because median is not going to have any impact. See, we are predicting median only, but other values will try to pull it towards itself, right? So that will not happen. So that's why it is easy, better way to replace with median, but not in the case of data analysis. Okay, so here we'll prefer we'll give a different number itself. Okay, so this is one missing value. Then what could be other uh, problems with the data? Null is missing only, no. Null is missing only. Null. No. Missing that value is not there, null. Zero, zero is not missing. So when you have zero, it means value is zero, right? So why do you want to replace? Zero is also a number. See, when you see zero, that means the zero would have, they would have got zero, right? You never replace null with zero. Okay, you never replace null with zero. You replace null with, depending upon, in this case, I would replace with, with, with some different number, minus 99. To indicate that, okay, minus 90, because you cannot have number of children at minus 99, right? So, minus 99 indicates it's a missing value or something different, okay? So, that will not be taken into consideration. Okay, so data, correct data, right? Now, the data can have outliers, right? Now, outliers may not mean that your data is incorrect. Okay, see, uh, when you talk about uh, uh, school, let's say most of the student in that school has got about 50% marks, okay? 50 to 60, 70 maximum. But there's a couple of students who have got 95 only two students have got 95, everybody else has got 50, 60. That case, 99, 19 is outlier, but it is not incorrect, right? It is correct data only, not incorrect data. But let's say there's one student with 105 marks. 105 percentage is not possible. So when you see 105 percentage, that means the data is incorrect, right? So first thing you have to do is, now, re remove that incorrect data, make it null, and then handle it like null, right? So you also have to make sure that your data does not have any incorrect data, okay? So incorrect data, sometimes it is difficult to find, okay? Incorrect data, okay? Like uh, extreme values, okay? not possible values, okay, um, uh, different data type values, okay, that means you have number of children as a column header, okay, and there you have none, null, it, it, it written not applicable, okay, none, so you have text, no, that's what I'm saying, mistake only, no. Yes, see, how can you have 
column see the, the the property of column is that the column should have same data type column cannot have different data type think of a situation where you'll have different data types you'll never have different data types number of children in the hotel thing it can be number only okay hotel name it can be text only right okay um uh okay phone number okay email id so it will have same data type you cannot have two different data types there so that means okay let's say uh, number of children only you have somewhere one zero two and then somewhere you have two. that is also incorrect we have to handle it right so so okay so that's that you know so the number that are which is not possible okay a different data type i just said right that is not possible so we also need to correct it before we perform analysis the main reason why we do data cleaning is we know that garbage in is garbage out right how do we make sure that we get proper data okay and let's see we, other steps also let's first focus on missing values so first we have to run and analyze and see if the data has really missing values isn't it so i'm going to run so i'm going to use seaborn and matplotlib so import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt see the plot graph okay it, okay is uh, is can be um, presented only using matplot a library yes okay so matplotlib has the uh, has the functions which will plot the graph okay now this is the basic uh, library you have advanced libraries as well you know another library is seaborn okay now seaborn is another advanced library okay now when you use seaborn as an advanced library what happens it also uses matplotlib as a base so in python you cannot plot without matplotlib all the advanced library also uses matplotlib so matplotlib will be there okay and you can draw so c1 graphs look better the ui looks better than matplotlib matplotlib is basic it will just look like lines but here it has some color and things like that it will look better okay so this is how we do now before we uh, plot okay so let's say it, it has about 33 columns so 33 columns will be too much for the screen let's take only 30 columns okay so i'm going to say polls equal to df dot dot columns okay and here i'm going to say now see what i'm doing is i'm dropping last three columns 0 to 29 column number 0 to 29 will be taken right so three there are 33 columns so three columns i'm ignoring but in in uh, when you are doing analysis right you have to first go through each of the columns and see which columns can be dropped see less the number of columns less the number of rows that you select for plotting or machine learning analysis less time it will take more uh -huh, for plotting or for even for analysis so our idea is to give as less data as possible to the machine learning that doesn't mean that we just drop everything we are dropping which is not making any sense if it is not making any sense let's say see when you go 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 on a picnic right or go you go to a different city for a visit do you carry everything with you all your no right you carry what is required for that duration of stay two days five days ten days based on your duration of stay you'll carry your things okay why because it's unnecessary to carry okay it is painful to carry isn't it so same thing okay if the data is not helpful then why do you want to include those data in the analysis okay it is going to it is simply going to waste your time and effort so we so we remove as many columns as possible we remove as many rows as possible which does not contribute you don't want to miss important columns and rows right like toothpaste you have to carry right even if you go for one day right so you, you don't miss toothpaste kind of thing but things which you don't need guitar maybe let's say for two days you may not carry it right if you think that you don't get chance to play then why will you carry it you come back and you can play right so that's why you have to choose each column and remove it so that 
less the number of columns, more efficient, more faster will be your processing. Okay. So here I'm just dropping the last three columns. Okay. So I'm taking only 30 columns. Now I'm going to draw a, a heat map. Okay. To draw a heat map, I need to have different shades. Okay. Now heat map can be of two types. One heat map is where you're representing discrete values. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to represent discrete values. Discrete values means like one, zero, two, three. Here you have two possibilities. Missing value, yes or no. So we'll use two shades, two colors. One to show missing value, yes. And one to show no. Okay, so two uh, things is enough. Then you have continuous missing, uh, continuous uh, heat map. So that's a temperature. Now if you plot a temperature, okay, it becomes a continuous because temperature will not be 1 or 10, right? Continuous, it will be continuous. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example. Wait. Heat map. of world temperature, let's say, or population, let's say. Okay, so this is heat map. So what happens? You have one color, okay, but you have multiple shades. Darkest is when population density is very high. Population density is very high. You see India, China, okay, India has very high density because our land mass is less. Pakistan, Sri Lanka, these are all densely populated countries. So you see it is very dark. As you go, it becomes lighter and lighter. So what advantage is that by looking at this graph, you can tell which country has high density and high, which has less density. This is density graph, right? Population density of 2022. By looking at it, you can say, which countries, which area has high population, which has low population. So this is another important metric that you have. Okay. So, you know, clearly it shows that these countries are, you know, uh, highest density. Then these are like second highest. And then Russia is like third highest. Australia is like almost like zero kind of, right? Very close to this. <coughs> okay. So this is the heat map. But in our case, it is just going to be two colors. Yes, so uh, uh, each row will be represented with two colors. If it is, if the value is not null, one color. If it is null, different color. Okay. So to col choose the color, it has to be hexadecimal. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get the hexadecimal color. Okay. Hexadecimal color codes. Okay. So you can click on color hex. You can see the color. Now let's say which color you want. Let's say I want this blue for high density. And uh, let's say maybe we'll take something green for low density, uh, you know, missing value. Okay. So let's first create a list. Okay. I'm going to create a list. Okay. So I'm going to say colors equal to, okay. Now the hexadecimal will be in string format and we write with F. F indicates hexadecimal color. So I'm going to copy the blue color code from there. Okay, so this is the blue color code. Okay, and let's take one some light color, light green. Okay, we'll take this one. Let's. Okay, so this these are two colors that we want to populate on the heat map. Okay, so this is ready. Now let's populate our heat map. So SNS is the Seaborn Library dot heat map. Okay, will give us the heat map. Now, here we have to give data as well as. No, no, any many plot. Okay, C one also has all the basic plot, uh, scatter plot, everything is there. Yeah. So in heat map, first data, right? So how do we give data? We have to give data as either yes, no kind of thing. So yes will be one color, no will be one color, right? So you have to give in like yes, no format. So I'm going to give it like um, uh, hotel DF 
and then look at the each columns okay so we, we have uh, here right we have 30 columns right so i am taking total df column 1 column 2 column 3 like 30 columns i'm taking i am saying dot is null okay correct in null values yes and now i give the color map c map okay so c map you say is let convert that list into color palette so we say sns dot color palette and inside we'll pass the colors okay so heat map is ready you need to plot it now if you are using uh, pycharm or uh, any of these editor pycharm vs code editor you have to compulsory give plt dot show otherwise it will not show okay plt is your matplotlib pie plot okay so you have to give to display the graph but if you are using notebook right like collab or um, uh, jupiter okay then you don't have to say plt automatically it will show okay so now let's run and see what we get So you see this, the green ones, these are your missing values. Okay, so you see this, this particular column, so, you know, because of the space constraint, it is printing only, you know, one alternate column names. So this one has almost like what, 90, 95% data missing. So definitely we can drop this particular column, right? And then there are some missing values here, some missing values here, some missing values here. Okay, so let's start handling one by one. First, we will drop this column. We don't need this column. We'll drop this column and then we will see how many values are missing. Here you see this is your row number. Row number one, this is row number 4592. Okay, something like that. So we have almost 1,19,000, almost 1,20,000 rows we have. Okay. So that's why it's taking time. No worries. Let's let's go and see what we can do. Okay. So okay, so we have we have seen the the spread of data, right? Now, if you want to see the percentage of missing value, let's let's do that. Okay, let's run a for loop. Okay. So we'll run a for loop for column in uh, hotel df dot columns. Okay, so this will <clears throat> give us each column from the hotel df columns. Okay, column will have the value, and we'll run a loop and we will calculate and see how many missing values are there. Percentage will calculate. Okay, so how to calculate percentage? You have to calculate average of the total missing values, right? So I'm going to say here percent missing equal to okay so we, we need to import numpy we'll use uh, numpy properties np so i'm going to say np dot mean okay mean what mean of your uh, hotel df okay and hotel df of each column, sorry. Okay, is it null? Okay, so this will give a percentage of missing. Now you can print them here. In the next line, we'll print it. So I'm going to say print, okay, f string. We will print it purposely. All the 30 columns, 33 columns. Yeah, so you can give <coughs> condition here. If, see, for loop, what we'll do, it's taking one column ID, checking how many missing will display. 
So we'll have zero also. Okay, we can put some um, condition if you want to, if you don't want to display miss zero value. So you can put a if there before. Okay, for now, let's print all and see what do we get. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, this is your column, right? So this column has how many percentage value, missing value? Okay, so this is nothing but uh, your that's the average, right? So average, then we have to multiply this with 100 to get percentage. So this will give you percentage. Okay. And let's run it and see what we get. I'm going to close it. You see this. All the columns have been displayed, right? So see here, ID 0%, hotel 0%, is cancelled is 0 0.008%. 0.008%. We have multiplied with 100, remember. So this is 0.008%. Baby is 11%. Males 11%, right? So if you want to see what are the missing values, as I said, we can put an if here. What if your percentage missing, okay, if percentage missing is greater than zero, okay, well, then you print, right? So now if you print, You see, you are getting all these. So these are the values which are missing. Okay. Now, if you want to delete a particular column, okay, now you see here, company has 94% data missing. Okay. So if you want, um, uh, you know, let's say a, more than 80% co column with more than 80% missing, you want to delete. So you say 0 0.8 80. That means wherever it is more than 0.8, that means 80%. Okay. So we'll delete those columns. So we can simply drop that. Only one column, company, right? So what I'll do, I will say, Hotel DF equal to Hotel DF dot drop. Okay, drop what? I'm going to say company. Same spelling, okay? It has to, spelling has to be same. So I'm going to say company. How can you have two columns with the same name? You cannot have two columns with the same name. How oh, I'm replacing. I'm replacing old DF with new DF. Instead of create, you can create new one. You can say hotel DF2. But why to create a copy? You can replace the old one itself, right? So I'm dropping it before running this loop. So that here we should get zero, right? If, if it deletes successfully, we should not be able to see this, right? So I'm running, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping it before itself so that we can check also if it is getting dropped or not. Oops. Okay, so we have to say axis, which axis? Okay, now com this company can be column name also or a, a row name also, right? So you have to mention that it is axis zero. Axis zero means it is column. Axis one means it is row.
ओके नो नो आई थिंक आई एम आई डूइंग इट रॉन्ग ड्रॉप ओके तो आई थिंक आई एम यूजिंग इट रॉन्ग वे टू ड्रॉप इट यू हैव टू गिव नॉट कंपनी सॉरी सो यू हैव टू से ड्रॉप एंड इन ड्रॉप you have to say uh column name let me see if this works because you can have multiple columns right so uh okay one second i'm not giving the right syntax okay uh Okay, so hotel dot drop. Okay, and this is correct. Okay, so it is not zero. Okay, my mistake. Column is axis is one. Yeah. Okay, this was the mistake. Axis equal to zero for rows. Okay, one is for column. Okay, so now when you run it. right so you see that nothing got printed that mean column got deleted right okay right. now let's make it zero and see no anything greater than zero we have so many columns still there are zero so what we'll do is now we will look at count of the rows okay and we'll see the row which has more than 10 value missing we'll remove them okay so if row has 10 missing values then there's no point of using for analysis right so again you can decide uh, what should be the percentage mm -hmm. see if you have 15 data 15 rows which are important out of 10 is blank so what's the point of using them see yes yes so heat map is only giving you the view 
right? But you don't know exactly row which column, which row number. So for exact to know which column and which row, you have to use for loop only. That is to visualize, to see that, okay, we have missing values. But if you have to handle it, you have to use program only. That's why we have done loops and all, right? Because that's how you'll be able to pinpoint. Okay, so now we have to, now we have to count the number of rows, yes. So, um, okay, so let's do that. Uh, let's drop rows that have more than say 12 empty values, empty cells or values. Okay, so I have to go through. So, okay, so what uh, technique this has done is, you know, um, it has, it has created uh, extra set of, it has created extra set of row, uh, columns, okay, which will count if the column is blank or not, extra. So if you have 30 columns, 30 more columns are created. Okay, and each column title is missing. So it'll tell you, okay, how many missing are there in that? Because how do we count 12? Now, let me see if the data set is open on local machine. Okay, I don't have it, wait. Okay, this is the thing, it's coming up, wait. Okay. So now I want to count in this row, how many columns are missing? How do I do that? Right? You have to use some logic, isn't it? So the logic what I have used here is I'm going to create extra columns, right? So I'm going to add extra column like column one empty, column two empty, and then it will check if the column is that empty or not. If the column is empty, you say one. If column is not empty, you say zero. So, so we are creating extra set of columns. And now if you simply copy these values, you will know how many columns are missing. Okay, how many columns in each row are missing, right? So as I said, I want to remove rows which have 12 values missing. But how do I count? There's have to be some way to count it, right? So in this case, I'm creating extra set of columns, okay, with header missing and how many missing values and I'm going to count and check how many of them are missing. Rest. Okay, so um, let's do that. So let's go back to our program. Okay, so I'm creating, okay, is missing calls okay equal to so this will give me the co columns which are missing okay so i'm going to say um, um for okay call in df dot columns hotel df dot columns so i'm iterating through each column header df dot will give me column headers. So I'm iterating through each headers. So so for C in columns, okay. And I'm checking one more condition. If okay, but before that, I need to create those columns, right? So hold on. Before this, I need to. So if there's a missing value here, if there's a missing value, I'm going to create missing column. Okay, so I'm going to say hotel df. Okay, hotel df square bracket open. Okay, and I'm going to say f colon. Okay, you have here um, uh, col. 
that is coal is the column name okay underscore is missing okay so this is a new column which i'm creating okay df okay hotel df of so this is how you create a new column okay equal to okay and i'm going to say okay missing what is missing okay so before i do uh, okay percentage let me do the uh, av instead of percentage i'll calculate how many missing now i'm not doing the percentage i'll do the total calculation total so i'm going to say missing equal to hotel df of coal dot is null so if is null is missing that means uh, the missing will have all the is null thing is null is true when when you have missing okay and now i'm saying i'm going to count num missing equal to your np dot sum add add what missing so it's going to count total number of missing in that column how many values are missing in that column okay and of course i can say if number is missing okay you can display it total missing this is total so no percentage required right and here i am saying uh this is your missing so this will give us how many values are missing okay so let's run it and see if it is able to calculate correctly so this is from your book i'll give you the uh, page number okay now you see these are the count 14 14 10 10 10 14 okay here you have 2000 rows missing right so it has number of missing values here yes for each column okay now what i'm doing is now i'm going to create columns with missing so for column in hotel df columns okay if if is missing because i'm adding a column with is missing right so if this is in if this is in column okay and then i want to return it as a list so you will you will get a list of columns here okay if you want you can print this okay i can comment it out because i don't i'll, I'll let it print not a problem So see, now we got the names of the columns which have missing values. And see, each of them have been assigned with is cancelled. Is cancelled is a column. We appended underscore is missing. Lead time is column. We appended is missing. Arrival date week number is column. We added is missing. So these are extra columns that we created. Now we have to perform some on these missing columns. Because only these columns have missing values. So those columns we does not have missing values. We have not created extra column, right? So we have to count how many of these are missing values there. So how to count? Okay. So I'm going to say, okay, missing index missing. IND stands for index. So rows basically. Rows are called index in pandas. Columns are called columns only, but uh, uh, rows are called col index. So remember when we created that table we added index name column names index name so index missing equal to data frame of now i'm giving condition inside okay this is hotel df hotel df of and now i'm giving the condition here so hotel df of okay 
uh, num missing, right? But we haven't calculated num missing. We calculated num missing. No, we haven't calculated num missing yet. So what we'll do? This is the columns that we created. Now we have to uh, create total number of missing. So I'm going to say total df. I'm adding a new column here, and I'm going to say num missing. Okay, total number missing. Okay, this is going to be your hotel df. Okay, a bracket open. Okay, now you have is missing columns dot sum. Okay, on column. Now here I'm going to say is missing. Okay, so is missing hotel uh, is missing equal to hotel df hotel df num missing. Okay, and I will say greater than twelve columns. Okay, dot index. That means I am only taking columns which uh, where you know rows which have twelve columns missing. That's why it's, okay index. Okay, so now int missing is ready. Now I'll drop all of these. I will simply drop all these. Aha, uh -huh. index missing. Okay. So I'm going to say hotel df equal to hotel df dot drop. Okay. Now yeah, ind missing. Okay. And this is what? Access equal to zero rows right okay so after this let's display the number of missing values okay right so we can copy the same logic here right yeah, yeah. so i'll go through each column and count no how many more columns are missing Right? No, no, not greater than 12. It is already dropped. After dropping, we want to see how many columns or columns still have missing values. Okay? So after dropping the rows, still there could be some, right? So less than 12, we are not dropping. So there could be some columns which are less than 12, but still they have missing values. So that's why I'm, I know I copied the same code here. Okay, and I'm saying, you know, num of sum. Okay, and I want to see how many values are missing here. Now missing. Okay, let's run and see. See, still these many values are missing but we have less columns to handle now right we had almost what see so many maybe 25 20 25 columns were missing now we have these many numbers missing for which we have to apply our second strategy the strategy is replace with some value right now children is a number babies is a number okay now uh, male country deposit type age and these are all categorical values how do you know you have to go and check in the data so which columns we have to handle children babies meals country right okay so these are okay so four country deposit and agent Deposit and agent. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do is we don't know whether it's they are you know the uh, what happens. Uh, <clears throat> so. Um, so now we have to replace this missing value, right? So what we're going to do is 
we are going to replace all the numeric value with the median value. Okay. And all the non numeric value, okay, or category value with the mode value. Mode is maximum occurring. So if you have here, like whichever has the maximum number of country, we'll replace with that country. Okay. So same thing with deposit, we'll do. Meal also, same thing. Okay. You have BB, FB, HB, I don't know, maybe it is breakfast or whatever. We'll replace with the maximum marketing. Okay. So let's go back and I'm going to iterate through each of the numeric columns now. So, okay. Or you can iterate, see the six. So one thing is manually you try to through all the six. Okay. If you have individual strategy, if you see it all depends upon your business case, right? What you want to do. So if you want to have different strategy for each of the different columns, then you can iterate through each column and replace it whatever strategy you have. But here I'm going to do, I'm going to have one single strategy for all the numeric columns and one single strategy for all the categorical columns. Okay. So for numeric, it is fine. Okay. Uh, uh, otherwise, all the other columns will be what type? String. So by default, when you read, it is read as either numeric or string. We have to convert string into categorical now. Okay. Because in string, we can't get mode. We can only get mode in the uh, categorical. So what we'll do is we'll convert into categorical and we will count each value. Okay. Whichever value has a maximum count, we'll replace with that. Okay. So what we'll do, the meal. Okay. So you have a um, meal. Uh, Deposit and country also, right? So country also will convert into um, numeric. Sorry, no, I'm saying numeric, uh, categorical. Okay. So how do you do that? So you have to say um, hotel DF bracket open country. Okay. It's better to copy and paste. So I'm saying this is now equal to Okay, PD dot category. This is how you convert into categorical type. PD dot categorical, and we will say, um, I know, hotel DF dot country. Okay, so I'm going to convert into categorical now. Country, country deposit type. Mir agent. Okay. So, okay. So now all these are categorical type converted. Okay. So what we'll do. Okay. I'll show you how to do it individual columns and then how to do with loops. Okay. So numeric is individual, right? So let's do individually. So I'm going to say median equal to hotel DF of column, which is children. Okay. Dot median. So this is going to give me median. Uh, no, because see here we're reading column only. No, one single column. So here access is not required. D no, no, only one column taking where is the row here? I'm do, I'm doing on this is this is what will indicate it's a column, isn't it? Similarly, I will take median for um, babies also. And now I'm going to replace the missing value here. So I'm going to say hotel df of children. Okay. Hotel DF of children equal to hotel uh, DF of children. Because see, now if I do, all the values will be copied same. But I'm saying if it is L N A, so you have something called as fill N A. So fill not uh, available data, null data, 
with median okay so this is how you end up okay babies now when you go and run the same logic here we shouldn't see children and babies right so we are replacing children and babies with median so this is one way of addressing your uh, your missing values where we are replacing with median values okay so median values will be gone hopefully yes you see agent was the last value right so now you see male country deposit type and agent are remaining okay children babies are gone so now okay so this is done uh, okay uh, i'm going to say here print after handling missing values okay okay now we will iterate through the columns which columns uh, categorical columns okay we will iterate through categorical columns and we will replace the missing value with okay uh, so what i'm going to say uh, handling non numeric non numeric columns okay so non numeric columns equal to your um, uh, So what it is doing is okay. Um, so you have uh, uh, hotel df dot select hotel df dot select d types. Okay, and I'm saying here exclude. Include means take only those. Exclude means remove those. So I'm going to exclude numeric. If I remove if I exclude numeric, I will get non-numeric only, right? So I'm going to say exclude uh, list because we can enter multiple values. That's why we have list here. NP dot number. Okay. So I'm saying exclude this. So this will only have columns from this which has a non-number data 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 type. Okay. Now. So I've got this. Now I'm going to run a loop. Okay. So loop will be for call in okay, your non number columns. So I'm iterating through non number columns now. Okay. And I'm checking missing equal to hotel df of column. Okay. Is null. Is it null? Okay, so the miss value will be here. And if number of missing columns, so I'm going to say num missing equal to you have np dot sum. Okay, sum of your missing column. Now I'm saying if num missing is greater than zero, okay, replace. Okay. So replace. How do you replace? So first, okay, we have to find the top value. Top value is the mode. So top equal to hotel df of column, okay, dot describe, okay, and top. This is how you get the maximum occurring value. Maximum occurring value is nothing but your mode top top. Now I'm going to say df of column. Okay. Df of column. If number is missing, then df of column. Okay. Equal to hotel df of column. 
fill na. Just like we did fill na there, fill na if number is blank. This. Right? So with that, we'll be able to replace the with the top value. Now when you run it, After handling missing values, there's nothing to print. All this has been replaced. So this is how you can replace the missing values. Okay. Now this is in your book. No, no, no not fine. I'll give you that book. Okay. This is from data visualization using Python by Sopnil out of page um, page one zero five I think one zero six page one zero six Page 106. Okay. So I'm going to share this, practice this. And there are other examples in that. How to draw bar graph, how to draw outliers. Okay. So complete this. Complete this exercise. Okay. Then we have something called it's inconsistent data. Yeah. Sorry, Pavni. Uh, no, is this comes under Python? No, right? It comes under data visualization. Yes, right? yes, data visualization using Python, right? So yes, Python we are done long back. Now we are in visualization. We did statistics. We are in visualization. So uh, for Python, I think we uh, did not discuss random and uh, handling date and time, right? Uh, we did so... random. Remember, we we made that game. I think uh, we uh, we did not remember, discuss remember, random. So we did not discuss random. We discussed random. We made that game. Remember, guessing number game. Guessing number game. We did uh, discuss random, right? Random int, random choice. Okay, but yes, don't worry. There are a few more topics we'll do in uh, Python. Okay, there are a couple of topics which we need to do. Map filter reduce. We'll do. We'll do. So um, so I want to stop after SQL and Python because it's getting like Greek and Latin for me as we go to Cypher and all. So it's getting tougher for me. So is it? Yeah. So after Cypher started, it's all like yeah, it's a bit tough for me to cope up with that pace and also. Okay. Fine. So that's what we'll do then. So uh, what I'll do is um, tomorrow, tomorrow onwards, we'll do Python only. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm we'll, very we'll sorry up. because no I'm, I'm not able to uh, understand it well. That is the thing. So sure, sure. No problem. Okay. So yes, yeah. we will. Um, yeah. So there are a couple of topics in Python. We'll do it and we'll, I think then this week only we can wrap up. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Sure. So yesterday, did we have any session? No, right? No, no, yes. no, no. You were not there, so we did something else. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sure. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Bye.